At Ball State University, we know your education is personal. So we welcome you as our learning partner from day one. Our students come from many different backgrounds, bringing their creativity and drive to all aspects of the learning experience. Whether that's in classrooms and labs, on the sports field, in the workplace, or out in our community engaged in hands-on learning projects. At Ball State University, we turn your emerging passion into an enduring purpose. Ball State's perfect size means you will have access to all the resources of a large institution while developing relationships that last long after you graduate. Our welcoming culture, immersive learning opportunities, and the collaborative culture among our faculty and staff provide the ideal environment for you to begin your journey to a fulfilling career and a meaningful life. Spirited and motivated, the Ball State community is ready to embrace the future. And our students, faculty, and staff have the intellectual curiosity, the determination, and the courage to shape it. Lifted by knowledge, yet grounded in our values, moving confidently upward to greater and greater opportunities. As Ball State Cardinals, we fly. Are you ready to fly? Good evening, fellow Cardinals, and welcome to Ball State Plus. This is the first in a series of virtual programs designed to connect, inform, and inspire Ball State friends and family. Tonight, we present the State of Ball State, full of exciting updates on our university. We will be joined by Ball State President Jeffrey Mearns, as well as basketball coaches Michael Lewis and Brady Sally. I'm your host, Sandra Chapman. I'm a 1986 graduate from the Department of Telecommunications, which is now the Department of Media, and I'm a Peabody award-winning journalist who has been on the air in the Indianapolis market for nearly 30 years, most recently at the NBC affiliate WTHR Channel 13. We are coming to you live from the Fisher Training Complex on the Ball State campus and have been joined virtually by hundreds of alumni from across the country. In fact, we have viewers from nearly 30 states. Indiana is, of course, well represented tonight, but we're also joined by alums from Ohio, Michigan, Texas, Florida, California, Minnesota, Maryland, and New York, among others. A big welcome to everyone for joining us tonight. Now, towards the end of the program, we will have a brief time for questions. If you have a question for President Mearns or either of our basketball coaches at any time tonight, please submit it via Twitter using the hashtag State of Ball State. We also have a special prize package for one of you this evening. A lucky viewer will be selected at random and will be announced at the end of our program. So stay tuned for that. Good luck and let's get started. We are honored this evening to be joined by the 17th president of our university. Since starting at Ball State in 2017, President Jeff Mearns has helped develop a new strategic plan, led the university through the pandemic, advanced various construction and renovation projects on campus, and increased alumni engagement and fundraising. President Mearns has also strengthened the university's relationship with the community, most notably through the innovative partnership with Muncie Community Schools. We look forward to hearing all that he has to say tonight, and it is my distinct pleasure to introduce President Jeff Mearns. Hello, Sandra. Hello, good evening, good and evening. thank you so much oh, for joining thank us. Thank you for hosting the program. Absolutely, have a seat and thank let's you. get started here. I think, first of all, congratulations on a new school year. It is, we're about four weeks into the fall semester and you can just feel the excitement. Um, when you walk around campus, you can see the student, students walking to, to classes. If you're standing at the scramble light, you can see about 100 students uh, on each of those four corners. So the excitement and sense of, the sense of excitement about being back on campus, that the pandemic Absolutely. is finally receding into the rear view mirror and that these students are now able to enjoy that full, robust Ball State experience. And I know that is exciting. Fall session is always exciting. And President, you have, or we have been honored, I should say, to have you serving as our president since 2017. What initially brought you here to Ball State? Yeah, so well, I always say I have the good fortune 
to be the president of Ball State. And I wasn't looking for an opportunity back in 2016, was very happy in the work that I was doing at Northern Kentucky University. But what brought me to Ball State were several attributes. First of all, the mission. I, I believe in the transformative power of a college education. It, my father was the first in our family to go to college. It changed his life, changed the trajectory of our whole family. What was particularly appealing about the Ball State mission, you mentioned it a few moments ago in the introduction, about our engagement with the community, and perhaps we'll have a chance to talk about that. Our beautiful campus, I know we're gonna talk about the beautiful campus, um, but also the people. It was the faculty and staff who I got a sense during the interview process are personally dedicated to the success of our students and our alumni who are continued to be, like you, engaged in the life and the mission of the university. And then I would say just the last thing, the enduring values. When I started to get a sense of what beneficence means and how she represents our, our uh, commitment for over 100 years to those enduring values. Those are the kind of values that my parents wanted to still, instill in me and my eight siblings, and those are the values that my wife Jennifer and I want to instill in our five children. So I thought if there was a place that was such an extraordinary professional opportunity that could be coupled with that, um, that personal values, it was an ideal place, and I was so grateful that the board selected me for this opportunity. Well, you have talked about a number of different things here, um, but, and I know you go around, you're a lot of different places talking to a lot of different people. Are there certain things that you like to highlight when you talk to people or perhaps even something right now that is a, a brag for Ball State, Yeah, so for when example. I'm speaking to alumni or potential students, I talk about why I came and some of the things I shared with you. I share uh, more recently a statistic. You know, the pandemic disrupted so many parts of our life but I shared one statistic, which is that since the advent of the pandemic in March of 2020, through our commencement in July of 2022, we have conferred, or maybe I should say our students have earned more than 15,600 degrees. Wow. That's a testament, as I say, to the creativity and dedication of our faculty and staff and to the tenacity of our students. Another statistic I like to celebrate, notwithstanding the pandemic and all of the, uh, the disruption, uh, we have received philanthropic commitments of $30 million or more in four consecutive years. We'd never done that in two years in a row, and we did it four years in a row, notwithstanding the pandemic, a testament to the extraordinary generosity uh, of our alumni and our benefactors. And then you mentioned it earlier, so pleased with the progress that we're making in the community, particularly with the Muncie Community Schools. Those are all amazing feats, so a lot to talk about there. When I think back about my time at Ball State, a big part of it was defined by the people, fellow students, faculty, staff, but also our beautiful campus. The university recently created a video showcasing the Ball State experience, and we'd like to share it with all of you right now. Let's take a look. There's something about this campus, something very special. It's history, it's beauty, the buildings, the paths, the trees, and the flowers. At Ball State, every day, we encourage our students to seize the opportunity that they have on our campus. And we empower our students to do that with the strength of this beautiful campus underneath us and all around us. Our students quickly come to appreciate this physical foundation, and over time, they come to embody its spirit. For generations, we have welcomed people to this beautiful place, and by doing so, we provide the support and the serenity that binds all of us as cardinals. Of course, our campus beauty doesn't just happen. It takes dirt on our hands, sweat on our brow, but that's just it, that's the point. It's not simply about flowers, it's about the work it takes from everyone in every role to foster this beautiful environment. It's about our individual and collective determination to create a place that never leaves you once you let it in. As a student, this place inspires me. It provides a sense of belonging that makes this campus mine. This walk, every walk, on our campus, every step, every corner, it feels like Ball State was made just for me. And all of it 
all of it, creates a place I call home. We feel it too. Our campus community, that is what unites us. For faculty, staff, and students alike, these sounds They reinforce where we are. They rekindle the gratitude we feel for being here. And they remind us to be resolute and to reassure one another. As time passes here, these are the things that mold you. And then this, this day. For every Cardinal, this is the moment, the feelings, the sights and the sounds, all of these experiences, these relationships, this is when it all comes together, when we all come together. Like me, every graduate remembers this moment, when each one of us secures our place among thousands of graduates who walked these grounds before us. I met so many good people along my way. I navigated my classes and I challenged myself. I matured. I excelled. I am different now, but even today, I still feel it. This campus, this community, it is my foundation. At Ball State, what makes our university truly distinctive is something that is not tangible. It is the character of our people our students, our faculty and staff, and our graduates. It is a culture that is defined by the enduring values represented by beneficence. Absolutely fantastic. Watching the video reminds me how much our beautiful campus has evolved since I was a student. And President Mearns, for those who haven't been on our campus recently, can you talk about some of the changes that have taken place over the last few years? Yeah, and you saw some of those changes in that video, and we certainly are grateful for folks like you who come back to our campus to see those changes. So what you saw in the video at the southern end of our campus is our new foundational sciences building. It houses biology and chemistry. Uh, it opened in the fall of 2021, so this is now the second year. You also saw in that video the Alderdice gates, those new gates that lead into that pathway, and wanted to express my appreciation, take a moment, to Patrick Alderdice and his family for giving us the resources to complete those gates and to build the water feature that's there on that south end of campus. And then if you walk up that pathway that you saw me and some of the, the students on, you get to the center of campus where you'll find our multicultural center. As you probably know, that facility was on the southern perimeter of campus behind the, the student center. Center, and now it's in the center of our campus. It's in the center of our campus so that all of our students, not simply those students who identify with those programs, but all of our students can take advantage of the programs and services and staff that are in that building. So that's just some of the things that we've done over the last couple of years. And yes, I remember what it used to look like um, in the house that we used to be housed in. And so really fantastic work. And we understand that this isn't it. There's still another wave yeah. coming our way. So can you just um, give us a few details about what's headed our way? Yeah, so in that same area of the Multicultural Center, we're now completing the construction of the Brown Family Outdoor Amphitheater. So, you know, a couple years ago, we tore down the Emmons Garage and created a new parking garage over on New York Avenue, but it opened up what will be a beautiful green space there for our students and our faculty, staff, and community. And we're building one of the most beautiful outdoor amphitheaters in all of East Central Indiana so that we can have outdoor performances. That'll be in the center of our campus. And if you go all the way then back to the, where we started this conversation a moment ago, we're going to build a performing arts center in the village as part of a transformative vision to restore the village to what it was 
years, maybe decades ago, bring life and vitality and diversity into the village so there'll be options for our students, faculty, staff, our visitors, employees at Ball Memorial Hospital. We believe that that's one of the ways in which we can strengthen the campus and strengthen the community as well. Absolutely, and so we've talked a lot about the environmental and, and the appearance of campus. Let's talk a little bit about enrollment. Yeah. Um, give us an idea of what our student body looks like. Yeah, so like many institutions, and frankly most institutions all across the country, we hit some headwinds with the pandemic. But this year's freshman class is a nice rebound in terms of the size of the freshman class in the fall of 2021. Um, it continues to be at least 80% are Hoosiers, high school graduates from the state of Indiana. Another statistic that's important to me, more than 30% of them are still first in their family to go to college. I mentioned earlier the transformative impact of a college education. When that impact uh, happens to somebody whose family, family members haven't gone to college. Um, so we're really pleased and they represent the diversity of the programs uh, all across campus. So we're excited about the student body and as I said earlier, they're excited to be here. And so you mentioned uh, definitely having that draw here in Indiana. What are students coming to Ball State uh, seeking? Well, you know, seeing that video, and I want to give a shout out to our colleagues in the marketing communications. You know, I had this vision of creating an outstanding video that would show the beauty of our campus and the facilities that we have. And they took my idea and made it 200% better <laughs> because what they did so well was obviously show the campus but what they showed that was the campus facilities was just a part of what makes Ball State special. And what makes us special are the values uh, and the character and the culture and the commitment of our alumni. You know, as I mentioned, 15,600 graduates have joined the ranks of our alumni. It's now 210,000 living alumni all across the country all around the world and what's wonderful is they stay engaged and we created the alumni association has created a new platform that will allow our alumni to serve as mentors for our students so in addition to the support of the faculty and staff it now is a real concrete way in which our alumni can be engaged in the life and the mission of the university so if anybody out there is listening go to cardinals connect and they can uh, register their interest in serving as a mentor either for a student or for a fellow Ball State graduate. Well, you, be you best bet there's hundreds of them listening tonight. And we just want to give a reminder to everyone at home, if you have a question for President Mearns or for our coaches coming up, you can submit it now via Twitter using the hashtag State of Ball State. And also remember, we have an amazing prize package for one of you who will be randomly selected at the end of the program. So stay tuned for that as well. Now, before we move on to our next guest, I'd like to make a note that in addition to the states, we've already mentioned some of the other alumni joining us virtually tonight are coming to us from Kentucky, Georgia, Missouri, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Alabama, and Washington. So a big shout out to all of you as well. A few other interesting uh, stats to throw out there. There are alumni with us this evening representing every graduating class, get this, from 1969 through 2022. That's 53 years of representation. The class with the most attendees, 2006, those grads are here. And a big hello to a very special alumnus joining us tonight from Arizona, Danita Gross, who received her undergraduate degree in 1950 in journalism, I might add, woo hoo, and her master's in 1962. Welcome, Danita. We are so glad that you took time to join us tonight. Now, shifting gears to athletics, President Mearns, are there certain aspects of athletics that are kind of real special to you or things well, you like to highlight? Okay, so you'll have to tell me how much time I have for this segment because <laughs> okay. I know we got the coaches coming up. But we had another outstanding year on the court uh, and in the, in the field last year. Our women's volleyball team won the MAC championship, uh, both the tournament and the regular season, beat Michigan in the first round of the NCAA. Our women's tennis team also won the MAC championship again. Our men's volleyball team finished third in the country, the first year under Coach uh, Cruz. Um, our football team went to the two bowl games in a row. You know, right behind me is our MAC championship trophy and our, our, our first bowl win in our history. And then right now we have three 
Ball State baseball graduates who are playing in the major leagues. One of them, Alex Call, has just got called up about a month ago uh, in his first week or two on the Nationals, almost hit for the cycle, hit a single, double, and a home run, five RBIs in one game. And Dre Jamison, who just got called up two weeks ago with the Arizona Diamondbacks, is now 2-0 and in career starts, beat the Padres and now the Dodgers in his first two starts. So as you can tell, I get a little pumped up uh, about Ball State sports. So I'm looking forward, <laughs> like everyone else, to hear Coach Lewis and Coach Salee talk about uh, women and men's basketball. Well, you absolutely. There is quite a bit to talk about there. And now it is my pleasure to introduce not one but two coaches. First up, our new men's head basketball coach, Michael Lewis. Michael left IU as the school's all-time assist leader and has since spent the last 18 years as an assistant coach, most recently at UCLA. He is a native of Jasper, Indiana, and we are happy to have him back in the Hoosier State. From the new guy to the veteran, Brady Sally has been the head coach of the women's basketball team for the past 11 years, having guided the Cardinals to seven postseason women's national invitation tournaments, a WNIT Final 16 appearance, a Mid-American Conference West Division title, and eight, eight MAC tournament appearances, a feat no head coach at Ball State has done before him. It is a pleasure to introduce Coach Lewis and Coach Sally. Coach, you just set a record that you got to go after. That's right. <laughs> okay, Coach, good to see Welcome, you. Welcome, Coach. Thank, Thank you for being here. Hi there. Hi there. Nice to, good see, to see you. Good to see you. Both of you have a seat, and thanks for taking time away from your teams today to Absolutely. come out and uh, talk to us. And I think we will start our questions with, um, we'll start with Coach Lewis. You are, are um, from Indiana, so you understand what basketball means to this state. What does it mean for you to be back here at home coaching? I mean, it means everything to, to come back to a state that, that I grew up in, uh, where I played the game, both high school collegiately, uh, in AAU, and to lead a basketball program uh, where the basketball means so much to the, to the people in the state uh, is extremely exciting. So we're, we're ready to get started uh, with official practice on Monday. Well, I also want to let you know, I should have said this before we got started, that I want you both to know that my Cardinal pride is, whoo, when I was here, red hot. Um, and I say that because I spent a lot of time um, on the sidelines for three years cheering on the Ball State Cardinals football and basketball and um, actually as a pom-pom girl. So I think we've got some pictures up. I think they're flashing some photos here. That's a young Sandra Chapman, about 18 or 19 years old. And my dad captured those, was so proud that his girl was here at Ball State cheering. And um, I just had a great time here cheering for our teams and even got to cheer for um, a couple of Hall of Famers, Indiana Hall of Famers. Um, uh, Ray McCallum and Dan Palambizio. So those are the names. They stick in my head because, boy, we, we had a, a good, good runs time. with those guys. Yeah. So it was a, a really a lot of and, fun. And he's going to bring in some talent <laughs> that make us all forget about those guys. So also, Coach Lewis, I wanted to just ask, what brought you to Ball State? Why Ball State? Well, there's a lot of things, obviously, you know, for me personally, being from the state. But honestly, like I, I when I was looking at situations, um, you know, I wanted to find a president uh, that that believes in athletics and, and what it can do for the overall health of the university. Uh, I wanted to find an, an athletic director that I believed in and trusted in, in, in Beth Getz, and, and I believe and trust in and Jeff to, to hire somebody, you know, very similar that we can keep moving forward. Um, and then when you get past those things, the, the opportunity to win. And when I was growing up in this state, um, you know, they, other than the, you know, IU or Purdue, like this was the premier mid-major program in the state. And they were going to the NCAA tournaments, they were winning MAC championships. So I know it can be done here. And then when you combine that with, with me being from the state and, and everything we just talked about in the previous question, like it was, it was a perfect fit. Well, that's awesome. And how have things been since you've been back in Muncie? It's, it's, been, it's been great. <laughs> like it's, it's been, uh, you know, the reception um, of our staff and my family and, and how everybody's transitioned. And I, I think there's just a lot of excitement around, you know, our program, around our athletic department and, and really, 
uh, quite frankly, our university as a whole. And so I think it's a great time to be a Cardinal. That's awesome. And I understand that you two actually have known each other for a couple of years. And he still came. Oh, and he still came, despite yeah. that. Yeah. Let us in on that. <laughs> well, I, I took an assistant coaching job at Eastern Illinois, and, and you had already you had already been the head coach for a year or two a there, years, right? Yeah. So um, I spent six years there, him a, a little bit longer. Um, but that's where we, we first met. And so it's been really beneficial for me being a first-time head coach to – to have somebody I, I know and I trust down the hall. Um, I go down for a therapy session every once in a while. I went down there today. That's right. Um, but no, it's just, you know, something that somebody that I know and trust, like I said, that I can go down there and bounce ideas off. And, and um, you know, he, he uses his, his experience of being a head coach for a long time. Um, you know, it's good to have a little sounding board down the hall. Yeah, and not just a long-term coach, but a winning coach. So, uh, Coach Sally, you, you're the veteran, and you've been here for 11 years. Right. And how have you seen Ball State evolve over the time you've been here at the university? You, you know, it's, I, I was thinking about this. Um, when, when I first came here and, it, and interviewed, um, I was blown away by the campus. And, and, you know, as you're going through that process, you're thinking like a potential recruit as you're going around campus and you're seeing all the places that, that just make you say, wow. And you know, in our business, we talk a lot about wow effects. Where can we take somebody? What can we show them? What can we talk about that's gonna create that wow effect? And so to see that improve in the 10 plus years I've been here in the way, you know, everybody looks at how beautiful our campus is. And, and I, you know, the product we get to recruit to and, and work in is, is second to none. But really it's what goes on inside of those buildings that I think I've seen change the most. Um, you know, the College of Health and, and what that's done for our university. For me in particular, recruiting with that in my hip pocket has been through the roof. So I could go on and on and on. Um, and you know, he said it, I'll say it. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just ask any referee, uh, but uh, it, it all starts at the top. And he mentioned his vision earlier, and I think as any coach would tell you, to be able to work under someone that has a vision as big and as grand as his is exciting. Well, that's pretty awesome. Now, um, this question is for both of you, and we'll start with you, uh, Coach Sally, but what should we expect from your teams this season as well as what's ahead with their schedules? And Coach Sally, go ahead. Okay, so, you know, we've got a really good basketball team this year. Um, I'm not afraid to talk <laughs> about winning championships with this group. Wow. I, I think we've got the talent, um, we, we've got the minds, we've, we've got veteran leadership, we've got exciting uh, talent all the way up and down our roster. This is the deepest group I've had. Um, I'm actually having to pull the reins back a little bit on them because I think it's important to go through the process of building a team to a point where you can win a championship and they, they want to do it tomorrow. Uh, and, and so it's a fun challenge. Uh, and I, I got to tell you the other day, we were walking out of the gym after conditioning. I think I shared this with you the other day. And one of my players was like, coach, we've already decided we're going to win this thing. So don't worry, you know? And I said, well, we got a little <laughs> bit of work to do. We got some things, but I want to put it out there. I want to put that pressure on this group. And, and I think for us, uh, we had such a great run in Cleveland last year came up four points short. Uh, this group is gonna be five points better this year. That's awesome. So we'll definitely keep an eye out on uh, the women. To Hold yeah, me to that's it, That's right, <laughs> okay. And for you, Coach Lewis. No, we, we've got a group um, about half and half, half of new guys and, and half re returnees. And so we're still trying to you know, figure each other out. Um, and they're still learning our staff and, and our expectations and, and different things. But it's, it's been a group that's been good to work with. Um, you know, we were disappointed um, a couple days ago because we felt like we had to coach effort for the first time, which is really good since we got started back in April. Uh, and if you don't have to coach effort, then you get to coach basketball and the skills and, and you, get a, you, you become better. And so, um, you know, I, I never like to, I'm not into expectations or preseason rankings or things like that because I never want to put a ceiling on a team. Um, but I'm excited to see what this team can accomplish. Uh, I think the biggest challenge for us moving forward is how are we going to respond when, when things get difficult. And I think that's somewhere uh, an area that we can really grow in. 
Well, thank you both. I mean, both of you sound like you have exciting seasons ahead, and we're so grateful that you're here tonight. And to our viewers, we have been receiving questions via Twitter throughout the evening using hashtag State of Ball State, and would now like to pose some of those questions to our three guests sitting here. Our first question is for you, President Mearns, okay. and it comes from Lucy in the Cincinnati area. She says, it has been reported that enrollment across all of higher education is down. I've heard those reports too. How has that affected Ball State and what is being done to address it? Yeah, so we, as I mentioned, our enrollment did drop, our freshman enrollment. Another challenge we're facing is retention of undergraduate students, and that's a problem that every institution all across the country is facing. Because if you think about it, the incoming freshmen, their high school careers were interrupted. Uh, there's also, we know that there's stress that exists all across the population. So we're doing more to recruit students, not just here in Indiana, but all across the, the Midwest. And we're also investing a significant amount of resources in new staff and new programs to create that sense of belonging for our students. So not only do they enroll, but they retain and they graduate in four years. So we're making the investments to respond to those challenges. And we're also grateful to the Lilly Endowment who's investing a million dollar grant in Ball State as part of a statewide program to persuade or encourage or inform current middle school and high school students about the continuing value of getting a college degree. So we're working here on our campus and we're working with our colleagues uh, and partners all across the state of Indiana. Thank you for that answer. Our next question is for Coach Sally, and this is from Bob S. in Crown Point. He says, in past years with personnel changes, you've joked about the first game, about figuring out the starting lineup <laughs> once you're on the floor before the game. Mm -hmm. Has this year's lineup uh, taken shape for you, yeah. or is it still a competitive practice? Yeah, uh, I, I wish our lineup was already set. It, it uh, uh, make me sleep a little bit better at night. But, <laughs> but like I said, you know, I think the process is so important, you know, so I think going into it, even though I've got a veteran group back and I've got a lot of returning starters, going into it with kind of that clean slate feeling of if, if you want something, let's go earn it. Let's go work for it. Um, and, and this team understands that nothing's given to them. Uh, they're going to have to earn everything that they get from playing time to starting lineups and, and everywhere in between. But that's the beauty of what we get to do. And, and that's what's rewarding is when you see a team earn it you know that it's something special. And that's a good problem to have Absolutely, too. <laughs> absolutely. And a coach, uh, a question now for Coach Lewis from Tim W. in Fort Wayne, my hometown. How much pressure do you feel as a first time head coach in the state of Indiana in I'm showcasing what you can do? To that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I don't, um, I, I don't really, I wouldn't call it pressure. Like I, I think um, I've been presented with, with a, outstanding opportunity to, to lead a program, like I said, where basketball is important, where it means, you know, to the people of Muncie, to the university, to the state of Indiana. Um, I don't look at that as, as pressure and, and I, I don't shy away. I'm like Brady, I don't shy away from expectations. You know, you don't, you don't play at IU, you don't coach at UCLA if, if you don't want expectations. Um, you know, I, I came here, that, like I said, the job was attractive to me because I, I know we can win here. And so I don't, I don't look at it as, as pressure. I look at it as an opportunity to, to build a program that this university is proud of. Great, and another one for you, Coach. And this one is from Ashmore on Twitter. The question is, what will be the path to positioning BSU men's basketball to more victories in the MAC and getting back in the NCAA? Oh, you gotta win games. <laughs> it's, it's simple, you got to win games. I've done a great job. Right. I'm, I'm He's genius, out. right? Yeah. No, I, you know, I, I think, um, you know, like I said, I like our group. I like the talent. I like the, the makeup. Um, we've got to get tougher uh, in the tough moments of the games at the under four. Uh, if we can defend better, uh, it's pretty simple. You know, defend better, take care of the basketball, take great shots, um, and give yourself an opportunity to win at the under four timeout and uh, then go be the tougher team and just you know, execute at a higher level. And that's where we've got to improve at under stressful situations and chaotic situations. Are we going to be the mentally tougher team to, to execute at the highest level? 
All righty, great answer. And another question for you, President Burns, from Allie in Michigan. What do you envision Ball State's faculty mix looking like over the next few years? How will Ball State attract the best faculty? And what do you see as the ideal balance between academics and practical experience? Professionals. Well, there's a lot of in that in that question, so let me unpack <laughs> it. I think one of the things that attracts outstanding faculty to come to Ball State and to stay is the facilities, as we've talked about, the creative and innovative culture that exists in our academic programs, because we're doing the kinds of things that Ali is suggesting. We're showing our students the direct connection between what they're learning on campus and what they will have the opportunity to do when they graduate. That's why we talk about our mission. When you, It's very simple about our students. It's helping them have fulfilling careers and also lead meaningful lives, which is about our values. So what we think attracts faculty, staff, and students is that intersection of professional opportunities as well as service, um, meaning, meaningful lives through, through service to others. All righty, thank you all so much for your thoughtful answers. And we're about out of time, but we do have one piece of unfinished and very important business. There is an amazing prize package for one of you tonight. One lucky viewer will win their choice of one of the three following. A VIP homecoming experience for two, including front row parade seats, Charlie Town food vouchers, game tickets, and BSU swag, or a personal campus tour and lunch with a campus leader, or a Ball State mega swag bag shipped directly to your home. We have randomly selected one of you who, who pre-registered for this program. And that lucky winner is Angela O'Giblin from Boca Raton, Florida. Angela is a 2005 graduate from the College of, College of Sciences and Humanities, and we want to say congratulations, Angela. Please send an email to bsualumni at bsu.edu in order to claim your prize. Again, that email address is bsualumni at bsu.edu. And that's it for us tonight. Thank you to President Mearns and coaches Lewis and Sally for joining us. And thanks to all of you at home, the Cardinal Nation, for being with us. We hope this evening inspired and excited you about some of the wonderful things happening at our alma mater. Just a reminder that Ball State Homecoming is October 17th through the 22nd. If you haven't been back on campus recently, or even if you have, we would love to see you there. To learn more about everything at Ball State, please follow our various social media accounts for so many more exciting details. We look forward to seeing you on future Ball State Plus programs. But for now, good night and chirp chirp. <laughs>